Hello out there to you. In this video, we're going to do a Corno duopoly problem and find the solution to the problem, which in this case is going to be called the Nash equilibrium. So a lot of vocabulary and stuff going on here. Um, so when you're trying to think about Corno, it's named after a French economist uh, in the 1800s, and we basically have two identical firms and they're choosing quantities. So that's what you have to know. Um, what quantity are we going to choose uh, for each firm? Okay, so in, in this problem, we have this inverse demand function already figured out for us. Then we have uh, this firm one's cost and then firm two's cost. This can also be written, you might see that some other way, uh, as total cost for the first firm equaling uh, to Q1. And then over here, uh, total cost. Thanks for total cost for the second firm. This is just, just math notation for uh, total cost. Okay, it means the cost based on that quantity for firm two. Um, so duopoly means there's two firms. They, this is the demand function for the entire market. And we need to figure out how many uh, units each firm will be producing when they know what the other firm can do. The only thing that's different about this problem uh, that you'll see is that there are two different uh, cost, uh, marginal, well, marginal and total cost functions. So let's calculate both marginal cost functions. We're just going to take the partial derivative with respect to Q, and I'm going to write that over here. So marginal cost for the first firm uh, is just two, and then marginal cost for the second firm is just four. Okay, so firm two is less efficient than firm one. They're more expensive. Uh, so we can, just, in your head, make a prediction uh, which one's going to produce more? Well, it's going to be firm one because they can produce at a cheaper uh, rate. All right, next, what we want to do is uh, recognize that this quantity that they're going to choose is a combination of uh, quantity one that the firm one chooses and quantity that firm two chooses. So I could rewrite the demand function like this, 1,000 minus Q1 plus Q2. That's kind of helpful. Okay, now I want to get uh, the marginal revenue for both um, firms, set those equal to their marginal costs, and that gives me the, the reaction function. Um, then I can set both of those equal to each other and then just solve for Q, and, uh, and we're all set pretty much. So total revenue for each firm is price times quantity. So I've already got, uh, and it's really just Q1. I should write that as a lowercase q, uppercase q usually refers to the entire market, lowercase q refers to that individual firm. So I've already got this, uh, and so total revenue, I'm gonna multiply through a q1. Okay, so 1,000 q1 minus q1 squared minus uh, q1 Q2. And now as I'm doing this, I'm noticing this is a mistake here. You may have already noticed that. Okay. Because um, that's how it is over there. Uh, so you got to be real careful, I guess. And, and doing the problem by hand helps to, to find those mistakes. Okay. Because you might make them. All right. So then we're going to take marginal, marginal revenue uh, as the partial derivative with respect to Q, uh, Q1. Rather, so this would be 1,000 minus 2 Q1 minus Q2. Now I just set this equal to its marginal cost function, which is over here. So that's 2 equals 1,000 minus 2 Q1 minus Q2. Do some rearranging here, 998. Equals to Q1 minus Q2. And then I'm going to write this one up here. Now write it in black so it's easier to see. Just divide through by two. So firm one's reaction function is this it is 440, not 449, 4. What is that? It's a, it is four. Uh, 
998 divided by 2 is 499. What am I doing here? 499 minus 1 half Q squared. You could write that as 0.5 also. Okay, so we've got half of it. Now we just need to get uh, firm 2's reaction function. So I'm going to come over here and do that one. Uh, so this is total revenue for firm 2. 1000 Q2 minus Q1 Q2 minus Q2 squared. And after doing all, or sorry, getting marginal revenue, we got 1000 minus Q1 minus 2Q squared. Uh, notice they're the same. The marginal revenue functions are the same. That's because they both face the same demand function. However, what's different is the um, profit maximizing response function. So marginal revenue 2, we're going to set that equal to marginal cost of 2. So that's uh, this whole thing. So 1,000 minus Q1 minus 2. Oh, but that's no longer squared. It's just minus 2q. Two, 2 equals 4. So let's go back and fix that. Okay, and then uh, now I've got 996 minus q1 equals 2q2. Two Q two. Should be subscripts down here. Okay, divide back through by 2, and I've got Q2 is 1 half Q1 minus, and then uh, 996 divided by 2 is 498. And that's the best response function for the other firm. So Q2 is 498 minus 1 half Q1. Okay, so here's our two response functions, and now we just need to solve for both, so we can just plug one into the other. Drew that a little weird. So we'll do that on a different screen. All right. Okay, so just going to plug one into the other, uh, however you feel would be better. I like firm one first. Remember, it's got to be a little bit bigger. So it's uh, Q1 is 499 minus one half, and then we're going to plug in this function into uh, Q2. So it's 498 minus one half Q1. Okay, Q1 equals 4.99 minus half of that, which is 4.98, and then minus one fourth Q1. We're going to send that over there. And, oh, this is positive now. See a lot of steps on this one. So negative times negative is a positive. Okay, so this is three fourths Q1 equals 499 minus 249, 250. Worked out nice. And then Q1, I can divide both sides by 0.75 because that's the same as three fourths. That is 33 and a third. Sorry, 333. 33 and one third. Let me make sure I got the rounding right. Okay, got it. And then all you have to do is now just take this and plug it into there because that's how firm two is going to react. So firm two is going to do 498 minus one half. 
three, 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 and one third. Okay, so since we already have that in the calculator, we can actually multiply that by 0.5, and we get uh, 166 and two thirds. We'll make that negative and we'll add that to 498, and we end up with 331 uh, and 33. Okay, so three. And we're going to get quantity one, sorry, quantity two. And that was three, three, one, and one third or two thirds? Just one third. Okay. And one third. Okay. And now, kind of a messy example with thirds, but it worked out. All right, so these are the two um, quantities that, uh, so this one and this one, and we're going to add those back into our original demand function, which was price is 1,000, because we're trying to solve for price now. Uh, this will be 664 and two thirds. Okay, and so the price in this market is somewhere around 300 something. So 1,000 minus 664 minus, so 335 and a third. 335 and one third. Okay, so this is the price. This is the quantity for firm one. This is the quantity for firm two. Uh, and then if you wanted to, assuming there was no fixed costs, what you could do for the profit for firm one would be its total revenue minus its total cost. So you get that uh, from price, which is 335 and a third, times its quantity minus marginal cost, which in this case for firm one was two, so it's two, and then multiply that by its quantity, which was 333. Then the profit for firm two, we're gonna do the same thing, price times quantity. Uh, the price is gonna be the same, 335 and a third, and then the quantity will be 331 and a third. It's kind of annoying numbers. And then its marginal cost, which is a little higher, so instead of being two, it would be four uh, times quantity, which would be that that same quantity. And firm one's going to make a little bit more profit because they produce a little bit more, but uh, that's okay. And uh, that's how to solve for Corno duopoly when the costs are different.